Good afternoon. Um, my name is Carrie Penavad. I'm the director of the undergraduate program, and I'm here with Alan Schulman, who's the director of the graduate program. We are um, hosting this event as a way of presenting the electives for the upcoming spring semester. Um, it's a little ironic because we have very few bodies in the room. It's because we're taping these and that means most of the students are looking at it um, away from the space, but I think it will be a useful way for the students to see the various options as you begin advising. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna generally go in alphabetical order and ask, act, ask each faculty member to just briefly present their coursework. For those that are not able to attend, either Alan or I will present the various flyers. So we'll have Professor Jermaine Barnes. Okay, so clearly it'll be only faculty in my elective. <laughs> However, um, if a student decides they would like to take the seminar, um, it's called Criminal Architecture, and it's basically a survey course of uh, popular culture and restrictive um, architecture and planning using music videos as a lens, right? So. Um, how was our city shaped through gentrification, redlining, um, things of that nature, but we're gonna experiment through the music video, not specifically uh, a hip hop music video, but any music video that correlates housing, um, uh, social housing, things like that. And the goal is to diagram through the semester, through these spaces, understanding what type of repercussions they have. So it'll be a diagramming seminar as well, so we get better at drawing and experimentation in that regard with the goal at the end of the semester of everyone shooting a music video, um, which I think could be pretty interesting, especially as well. So um, if any faculty would like to take the course, I would love to have you there. Um, to the three students that are here, four students that are here, maybe one of the four of you will also decide to take the course. Thanks. To appease Jermaine, the audience is broad. It's just not physically present. <laughs> okay, we're going to skip over Professor Brillhart, who's in the middle of a presentation. He's gonna present at the very end of the afternoon. Um, this next class is uh, part of our history electives. It will be offered by Richard, uh, I mean, <laughs> by Victor Dupi, Professor Victor Dupi, and it's entitled Renaissance Architecture. I'm just gonna go ahead and read the flyer, um, which is, as we consider the shape of cities and the role of monuments within them in the 21st century, it is worthwhile examining how architects and patrons of the past dealt with similar issues when they first set about articulating a modern, humane worldview. The Renaissance counts among the most fruitful er eras of experimentation in architecture and urban design, and it continues to exert a strong influence on the West today. So for those of you who are interested in taking this course, you will see it as part of your history options. Uh, and of course, it's open to all students. And Professor Christopher Chung will be presenting the next elective. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris, and I'll be teaching Introduction to Programming for Architects uh, this spring. Uh, so I've taught this course uh, the last several years, um, and every year I try to improve and update the course according to uh, student feedback. Um, so historically, this course has kind of looked at it, uh, or programming from a sort of general perspective, and it's kind of reflective in the way the course uh, has been outlined in the two halves. So generally I teach it with uh, the first half focusing on parametric design uh, using the Grasshopper Rhino framework. Um, and then we move on to uh, sort of more open-ended programming using uh, processing. So it's a text-based programming approach um, using processing, which is meant for uh, media artists um, and uh, multimedia installations. Um, however, this spring I'm changing it um, in the sense that I'm focusing the whole course on uh, computational design. So the whole course will focus on the Grasshopper Rhino framework. However, I'm still keeping the, the halves in um, Grasshopper, and then we'll, we'll look into text-based uh, programming within the Grasshopper framework, uh, specifically looking at uh, Python. Um, so that's the sort of main change for this spring. Um, for those of you who 
perhaps don't really know what Grasshopper is or maybe heard what Grasshopper is but don't really know what it is. Um, so Rhino, so it's a, it's a plugin for uh, Rhino. Um, so as a precaution, it is a course in which we will not be going through Rhino. So students will have to have a basic understanding of uh, how to use Rhino. Um, but in contrast to 3D modeling in, in Rhino, if you think about it, it's a, it's a much more additive approach. So if we 3D model, let's say, a room, uh, you would draw out your uh, floor with a specific dimension in mind. Uh, and then given that surface or geometry that represents your floor, you would then get, uh, let's say, a, a wall and its adjacent walls, uh, respectively. Um, in contrast, uh, modeling within Grasshopper uh, takes a much more, let's say, relationship-based approach. So having a sense of dimensions isn't as important, although you have to keep in mind of how big this floor is. But you, that, w that can change in the future. Um, so instead of thinking, you know, the specific size of the floor, you're thinking about where is this floor positioned and how is this wall positioned in relation to that floor. Uh, and so this becomes very powerful because then you can start to dynamically change uh, the size of the floor and the walls, uh, the associated walls and perhaps the roof uh, would change associatively as well. Um, and so this, as you can imagine, becomes very powerful in the sense that you can start to think about multiple iterations without having to manually change and update your model every time, let's say, a particular dimension changes. Um, and so this is a basic example of uh, the differences between modeling in Grasshopper versus modeling in Rhino, um, but it unlocks a lot of uh, potential through different functionality and methodologies that you find through programming. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's sort of a brief sort of example in the, com uh, the comparison between the two approaches. Um, just a logistical standpoint, the course will still continue to uh, be conducted in uh, two days a week. So it's Tuesdays and Thursdays for an hour and a half uh, in a lecture lab format. So Tuesday will be a lecture, um, which will go through examples and concepts. And then the following Thursday, we'll go through ex students will go through exercises, um, recapping some of the examples and uh, concepts that we went through in class. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to come find me at RAD, or you can email me, uh, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. So the next elective will be taught by Professor Adib Kure, who couldn't be here today, so I'll be presenting the flyer. Um, the title of the course is Made in Miami in 1986. Terunobu Fujimori and Genpei Akesegawa founded the Street Observation Society in Japan. The members of this society came together to search for moments of beauty found in ordinary, everyday places. The group's activities were primarily a fusion of two complementary approaches to looking at the city, including historical field work and the analysis of overlooked buildings throughout urban Japan and the Dadaist sensibility of identifying and categorizing ready-made objects lying latent in the streets of Tokyo. Inspired by their efforts, Made in Miami will observe, analyze, and record the material culture and vernacular traditions of Miami, searching for the unique characteristics that arise from an understanding of the poetics of the prosaic. The course will be structured with informal lectures, followed by a series of walks throughout the city's key neighborhoods, Students will be asked to function as urban detectives, recording their discoveries by way of photography and drawing to uncover an alternate reading of the city not readily advertised or promoted in contemporary depictions of Miami. I don't believe that um, Adam Demler is here either, right, Armando? Would, okay. So I'm going to, again, briefly present this course which, uh, which is really open to all students, although part of the construction management concentration. The course will review, use, discuss, and study the application of emerging technologies in design and construction. Students must have previous knowledge of BIM and associated software like Revit, as well as a very strong interest in technology. Many students simply do not understand the myriad of technologies that will confront them in the workplace and what will be required of them in the 21st century practice. This course helps architecture and construction management students prepare for what currently exists and what is emerging. The course is intensive, practical, 
and comprehensive. Um, as for requirements, the subjects covered include advanced BIM practices, information management skills, industry adopted standards, emerging visualization tools, visual programming methods, new materials, building fabrication methods, um, as well as AI and machine learning. Okay, the next presentation will be by Rafael Fornes. The elective is Studies of Havana. I have been teaching this class since 1996. As uh, so referred in the introduction of the uh, course, it's about the city Havana, of Havana, the city of Havana, that um, has been called uh, the Rome of the Americas by very talented uh, scholars like Andres Duani or uh, Dean of uh, Notre Dame University, Michael Lucudis. And it's a city that celebrates in November 16, the 500th anniversary of the foundation of the city. And usually what we do in class is uh, uh, watch uh, movies and, and my collection of photographs and uh, reading uh, articles. We have a lot of guests from, from Cuba visiting town. We always invite them and it's a very a special class, very relaxing class, and I, I invite you to all to know more about my hometown. Thank you very much. So this is less of a description. This is a, a, ho uh, a hotel design uh, elective that will be offered by um, Professor Fromizon. And uh, this will fit into the new uh, hospitality uh, certificate or housing and hospitality design certificate. Uh, for those of you that might have additional questions, I would ask you to reach out to Academic Services and contact Professor Fromizon directly. The next elective will be taught by Professor Jose Halibert Navia entitled Contemporary Latin American Architecture. Uh, the course is an examination of contemporary Latin American architecture and urbanism from the turn of the 20th century to the present day. The work of some of the great figures of Latin American modernism such as Niemeyer and Barragan to contemporary figures such as Paulo Mendes de Rocha and Isai Weinfeld will be discussed. The influence of the modern movement in Europe and Le Corbusier will be reviewed. Large-scale city plans, such as Lucio Costa's plan for Brasilia and Roberto Burle Marx's designs for Flamengo Park and Copacabana in Rio de Janeiro will also be analyzed. The course is going to meet twice a week, and it is a lecture slash seminar format. There will be assigned readings to complement the lectures. Attendance and two term papers are required. Uh, the first is of a specific building that was significant to the modern movement and the final project on the work of an individual architect. Um, Jaime Correa, and I'm here on behalf of Professor Carmen Guerrero, who is currently teaching her Italian rationalism course in Rome. As you know, Professor Carmen Guerrero's research interest falls within a period of architectural exploration that basically changed and determined the role of architects and urban designers in the production of the contemporary city. This period, from the first to the fifth decade of the 20th century had enormous repercussions worldwide, and as a consequence, the city of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic was not immune to, um, uh, to its modern influence. The seminar that she wants to teach during the spring of 2020 will focus on the documentation of buildings representing the modern heritage of the colonial area, area of the first city in, in the New World in the so-called Zona. In collaboration with local historians, architects, and scholars from the UNFU, which is 
one of the best schools of architecture in the Dominican Republic. Carmen Guerrero and the students enrolled in this course will produce documentation drawings and physical models of a range of buildings, including schools, retail stores, post offices, apartment buildings, houses, office buildings, etc. The course will start on February the 4th, uh, and because of its hand-on nature, it will have a flexible class schedule with required meetings on Tuesdays from 2 to 4.30 p.m. A final traveling exhibition will be presented here in Miami and in Santo Domingo, as well as in other parts of the world. And I sincerely hope that you can join her um, in this exploration quest uh, next semester. If you have any questions, you can always email her. Uh, she's in Rome now, as I said, and her email is carmeng at miami.edu. next elective will be presented by uh, Professor Dennis Hector. Good afternoon. Um, 1969 was the, um, an important year for site planning. Ian McCarg, who was the chair, the founding chair of the University of Pennsylvania School of Architecture, School of Landscape Architecture, and trained as a landscape architect, did two very important things. One is he organized the first Earth Day that spring, and the second thing he did was publish on a book called Design with Nature. Um, it's just fun to, he's fundamentally a, became an eco-activist in the midst of his landscape architecture career, um, and had became a, a public intellectual of importance similar to Jane Jacobs or um, Rachel Carson of that era. He brought analytical and a methodological approach to site design, which had been previously um, ignored. Number one, it ran counter to what was described as the more creative approach of the time. And the second thing is his technique is still completely relevant today. His technique essentially was to take all of the different criteria that you could measure about a site and superimpose them in transparencies one upon the other and thereby understand the appropriate decisions to be made about a site. Um, that process took a team of people a month. Um, ArcGIS today allows us to do that in an afternoon, an individual to do that in an afternoon. Um, so what this course is intended to do is examine McCarg's method and look at the way it's been updated particularly using ArcGIS. Um, it will be, it will be um, a seminar which has both a series of presentations and readings, but it also will have a series of case studies um, in which you will be involved in real site, analysis of real site, and if you want, you can use your um, design project site as one of the opportunities. The The goal is for you to be able to bring the power of the analysis to your site design. And it, a lot of this course is coming from the observation that ARC 223, D Architecture and the Environment, is become, in its one credit format, doesn't perhaps adequately deal with the, um, the information that's required to be responsible in site design today. So this is considered an extension of ARC 223 and takes that um, the content of that course and unpacks it in a full-length seminar. Thank you. This next course will be taught by Professor George Hernandez. It's an introduction to historic preservation. The goal of the course is to familiarize students with foundational concepts, principles, and history of cultural heritage stewardship. The course provides a general introduction to the history and theory of historic preservation and includes examples of cultural heritage stewardship fundamental to the engagement of cultural resources planning and management. Instruction is conducted in a lecture and seminar format 
Learning resources include selective readings and require that students come prepared to engage in class discussions and debate the topics of each assignment. So, okay. The ULI competition is a rather unique course as an elective. Um, professors Lombard and Vasquez are the primary faculty, but they are assisted by Chuck Bowl, Mark Troen from the um, Medru program, and also from Alice Morcade from the School of Business. This is a competition. It is a competition sponsored by um, the ULI and the, the funding that was provided by Gerald, the Houston developer, um, Gerald Hines. It is a two-week competition in which you work eight hours a day on, in a team of five people. Each team must have a minimum of five people and have a minimum of three disciplines. Typically it's, urban, it's, typically, it's MARC or urban design, plus the real estate development and urbanism program, plus business students. Um, the brief is issued in the middle of January, and basically you have two weeks to complete it. It is an urban design problem in a city that they've chosen, and they're incredibly well documented for you, and what they do is you have to create an intervention in that site. It's a highly organized competition in that the faculty um, have figured out an approach that gets you from the beginning to the end of the two weeks, and it is one in which you have a variety of people coming in and helping you um, with the competition. We have done, historically we have done very well. We've had finalists in the last couple of years and we had one honorable mention. One of the things, to, there's two things that you can think about, three. One of them is um, perhaps the, the least significant, which is that you will have an elective done at the end of the first two weeks of class. Um, but more, of far more significance are the two of the following. One is, is this is a great element for your portfolio. I mean, this is a really substantial piece that you can put in your portfolio. And the prizes are not insignificant. The winning, um, the winning entry is a $50,000 prize, and the finalist teams each receive $10,000. Um, so it's a, it's a real competition. It's one that is for students, and it's specifically a multidisciplinary team competition. If you have questions, you can answer them. Um, Professor Vasquez and Lombard can happily answer them for you. The next course will be presented by um, Professor Richard John. Um, so the architect, polemicist, and urban designer, Leon Creer, is one of the most influential and controversial figures in European and American architecture and urbanism over the last 50 years. Um, he's well known to us here at UM as the intellectual godfather of the new urbanism, which is transforming the way in which places are being made all over the world. Um, he is the designer of this building, uh, his own house in Seaside, and the town hall in Windsor. Now, this is a little bit unusual in that it is focused as a seminar on a single individual uh, and is a genuine research seminar in that this is the topic of my own research and I am hoping very much that the projects undertaken by students, the investigations, uh, will in fact contribute to our understanding of Leo's development. Uh, we'll be looking at his um, sort of intellectual trajectory and his development as a designer uh, through his teachings, his writings, his drawings, uh, his designs, and his master plans. Uh, and the format will be uh, a single meeting per week uh, for the first half or thereabouts of the semester 
I will be making presentations on topics and each student will be working on uh, research projects uh, and then we will have uh, student presentations uh, towards the end of the semester. Uh, and to give you a sense of the kind of topics uh, that we might be looking at, um, the list on the flyer might give you some indication of the major influences and interactions, uh, including Le Corbusier, James Sterling, Jim Sterling, uh, Lear's brother Rob, the Architectural Association where he taught, Keeper Eisenman, Colin Rowe, Michael Graves, Aldo Rossi, Massimo Scolari, Maurice Poulot, uh, Albert Speer, uh, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, the juxtaposition there is not intentional, um, Andreas Tuani and um, Lisa Pettis Eiberg. Uh, this seminar cancels a history lecture. Thank you very much. I actually just want to mention that there are, um, the freshman class will be here in about uh, exactly at one to start an exam. We probably have about maybe six more presentations, so just to keep that in mind, we want to keep it to maybe two to three minutes maximum, so they have enough time to take their exam. <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, Jean-François Lejeune just came back from Rome, and so excuse me, this presentation will be troubled by jet lag. Um, this class, Imagining and Building the Metropolis, to some extent, is a complement to the history of the city class that is being taught by Professor Victor Dupi every uh, fall semester. But it is a quite different uh, class in, uh, in its original nature. During centuries, the city that was built or the cities that were built were the cities that were thought. There were no fundamental difference between the reality of the city and the image or the imagination of the city. However, starting in the middle of the 19th century, new ideas for the future of the city or new forms of the city started to arise that competed with the ways that the cities had been built for centuries. It is this dichotomy between the reality of the city of the 20th century and the imagination of the city of the 20th century that the class intends to promote. Uh, the reasons for those changes are multiple, but pr primarily, as we will see, are social, political, and eventually architectural. The course is based on lectures, film, readings, as well as on student pr on presentation that will focus on the 20th century city through a concentration of the some important capital cities like Berlin, Vienna, Barcelona, Tokyo, and Rome. The course will highlight the reality, the ideologies, and utopias of the 20th century metropolis and contrast those with the city as it was eventually built. Among the theme will be the debate between the, the small town and the metropolis, the Charter of Athens, Team 10, New Towns and Neighborhood Units, Metabolism, Townscape, Aldo Rossi concept of the analogous city, and eventually the reconstruction of the European cities carried forward, for instance, by Leon Creer, as was just mentioned before. The uh, semester work will consist of two uh, items. One is in the presentation of an important reading that defined the history of the city in the 20th century, as well as uh, graphic analysis of metropolitan growth and cities. The class will be organized at two, two courses a week. The first course on Tuesday will be a lecture. The Thursday course will be a seminar of uh, practicing analytical views using essentially Google Earth and Google View as a tool of teaching. Thank you. The next class will be offered by Professor Elizabeth Platter Zyberg, and it's entitled Adaptation to Climate Change. It's an upper and graduate level elective seminar that introduces students to the topic of climate change and its related discussion. The course reviews current scientific evidence, the potential mitigation of emissions, and other ca causal actions, and the adaptations required by changing conditions. The global concerns of our time, rapid consumption of non-renewable resources, shrinking habitat of flora and fauna, toxic emissions into air, water, and earth, and human crowding in unhealthy conditions all present challenges that require urgent, creative responses. Related to all of these is the overarching natural phenomena of climate change, which of course affects our city directly. Um, I'm gonna skip to the end of the, of the uh, description just to say that the course 
uh, includes a variety of uh, visiting speakers that come through, uh, to the course from a variety of disciplines throughout the campus and even outside of our own community. Um, there will be a visit to the site of recent adaptation initiatives, and the course will have two assignments. The first, a review of mitigation methods, and the second, a creative proposal for adaptation of the built environment. Again, I would encourage all of you who are interested in any of these courses to reach out to the faculty directly if you have any additional questions. Quickly, this next course is, will be taught by uh, Victor Santana. It's a course uh, that focuses on construction management. Uh, once again, uh, real estate development is a collaborative, multidisciplinary effort in which a group of professionals contribute their expertise to a project in a time-sensitive environment. The course focuses on five major development types, land, multifamily, office, industrial, and retail, and students will in be introduced to the stages of development and the life cycle of these various projects. Due to the complexities of acquisitions, entitlements, financing regulations, market fluctuations, and construction variances, the management of development projects has become a science. As a result, cost and time estimating tools have been established to assist in resource management and in the execution of these projects. Um, the course is structured with a series of lectures, invited guests, uh, and professional hands-on uh, construction experience. Students will have the knowledge and understanding, hopefully by the end of the course, necessary to make informed decisions and impact the success of the built environment. The next elective will be uh, presented by Professor Florian Sauter. Hello. Um, the elective I'm going to teach is called Fragments Contemporary Architectural Conditions. Uh, in a time of anything goes that shows no uniform theoretical agenda, but rather a series of very personal uh, explorations into space making, uh, we will employ six terminologies, um, presence, surrealism, archaism, freedom, loss, and space-time to possibly frame the contemporary condition. Um, this highlights that looking at something contemporary means the course can only be suggestive, uh, suggestive and uh, hypothetical in nature compared to something, let's say, more firm when looking at the past. Um, to give a little bit of background, uh, in the last 20 years through the emergency of digital technology, the internet, uh, we have seen a drastic change in terms of practical and theoretical issues. In terms of practice, uh, uh, communication got much easier, prefabrication procedures changed, and we see building on a at least quantitative scale globally we have never seen before. Theoretically, uh, there is a lot of blocks nowadays that through their speed of uh, keeping up with the ever new, they make the old fashioned magazine kind of look outdated. Uh, at the same time, it has shifted the discourse from a former very American-European dominated debate to all parts of the globe, and, and where nevertheless the seminar really uh, kicks in is the point that uh, contemporary architects really don't seem to write a lot anymore. And we will precisely look at the little that is written uh, by practicing architects, practicing architects about let's between 12 and 15 i won't go through the list right now um, and try to analyze their work through their writing um, the course uh, is going to be very interactive uh, there will always be a couple of lectures on each topic uh, the first one more let's say philosophical general epistemological the other one then really dealing with these architects texts and works through presentations by students and at the end of the semester a short text kind of manifesto by the students who will be encouraged to also work with their memories and interests and show them to me uh, has to be presented. Thank you. This course will be taught by uh, Mark Schroen. 
It analyzes real estate transactions and deal structuring from the developer's perspective. Um, the course is structured as a case study method and explores the key components and the disciplines needed for successful real estate transactions and projects. I won't read the bullet points, but once again, if you have additional questions about the course, I would encourage you to, to direct your questions to Professor Trowan. This next course is a Historic American Building Survey course. We have the, just give us, give us six or seven more minutes, okay? The Historic American Building Survey course. Uh, which will be uh, taught by Professors Teofilo Victoria and Ricardo Lopez. Um, in 1933, the Park Service established the Historic American Building Survey following a proposal by Charles E. Pedersen, a young Park Service landscape architect. It was founded as a make-work program for architects and draftsmen that uh, were left jobless by the Great Depression. Uh, guided by field instructions, HAB recorders were tasked with documenting a representative sampling of America's architectural heritage. So as part of this um, semester's efforts, the course will actually um, involve the resiliency and recovery of cultural patrimony in the Abaco K, which is basically the Mahamas. Students will be documenting sectors of the downtown. This um, ideally is to be coupled with an upper level studio that will be offered in the spring. Um, and the course um, has funding to allow students to travel to the Bahamas to actually perform the field work, which is a ne necessary component of the course. Uh, I'm actually just gonna go back. Um, I don't believe Professor Brillhart has been able to make it back uh, from his presentation. So I wanna be able to make sure that we present his class. This is the last of the elective offerings. It will be offered by Professor Jacob Brillhart. It's entitled Living in a Tropical Landscape, a Visual Toolkit, Old Models for Future Buildings. The brief course description in the seminar will explore the material selection and the systematic architectonic assembly of residential architecture designed between the late 1920s through the 1960s. Architects that were working in different parts of the country developed their own regional interpretations of the international style by turning to the local landscape, climate, and materials to inform their designs. In an era of optimism and experimentation, these architects married building traditions with passive systems, new technologies, and innovative construction techniques. Emphasis on construction methodology was central to their work and became a model for sustainable design, particularly in tropical climates like South Florida. So in the course, students will research local architects and other post-war architects from around the country whose work was sensitive to the climate in which they worked. In the course, students will analyze his or her assigned architect and respective project. Using the original construction documents of the building, each student will then redraw and essentially reconstruct the structure through axonometric and sectional perspectives. Learning construction through drawing, students will gain a deeper understanding of material assemblies, connections, and construction, all in relationship to climate. If you have any additional question, um, I would encourage you to reach out to Professor Brillhart. Um, so I believe we've come to the end of the, um, the afternoon session. Again, um, I think the elective courses is, are an excellent opportunity for you to actually um, capitalize on the expertise of the faculty as these offerings really speak to their areas of interest. Um, and also, I think it allows you to I guess expand beyond your basic core requirements to be able to look at um, areas of particular interest in which you might want to culminate your career or more importantly project towards your career in the future. So thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Ana Regalado or Denai Morales at, uh, at Academic Services who are currently engaging in advising for all students. Thank you once again.